How bad is the problem? Well, go to the Education Gazette and you'll find 311 vacancies for primary school teachers, 224 for secondary school teachers, 470 vacancies being advertised for, quote, beginning teachers, and they are getting scarce. In February, Education Minister Chris Hipkins released figures showing a 40% drop in teacher enrolments since 2010. We'll look at the government's possible response to that between now and the budget. But we want to hear from teachers themselves. And so, well, here they are, three of them anyway, a new teacher, a senior teacher and a principal. Our cameraman Nick Monroe and I went to Birdwood Primary School in the West Auckland suburb of Ranui. When I read the words once upon a time I know that it's going to be what kind of story? Fiction. A fi oh, great word. Fiction. It's going to be a made up story, isn't it? Sharon Mansfield wanted to be the best teacher she could be. She went back to university. She now has a master's degree in education. She's still paying off her student loan. 12 years teaching experience, and in terms of her salary, she's climbed about as high as she can go. So I'm now at the top of the pay scale, um, and I think I'm just over 70,000. A master's in education, yeah. teaching for 12 years, and you're just over 70 grand. Yeah. And Takahe and Tui, like I said, you're carrying on today with what you were doing yesterday. That's higher than many of her classroom colleagues, much higher than some. Starting salary with a teaching qualification and a bachelor's degree is roughly 20 grand less. And when we talk to her during break time, Sharon pauses before she answers my question. Would you become a teacher again if you were starting over? Ooh. I, 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 yeah, I, I would, but you know, the question itself makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Because it's, it's not all roses, that's for sure. It's a really hard job, and the rewards are very intrinsic. Gorilla, go, go, gorilla. Intrinsic matters. It even sometimes sings, but it doesn't pay the bills. James is just past being a beginner. He's now in his fourth year as a teacher. A degree and a graduate diploma, he earns 51k. He's a dad and his rent is roughly half his after-tax income. And so do you own a home? No. Do you think you'll ever own a home? At this stage, um, it's not looking likely. But then he tells me a story about school swimming and a child who wouldn't get in the pool, terrified of water. And they worked at it and worked at it, encouraging him down the ladder, step by step. And then we managed to get him all the way down to the bottom and to touch his feet on the, on the ground. And uh, he was just beamed after that, like he came out of the pool, he t telling everybody, like he had such a sense of achievement. And... Um, so when we, did, when we had an assembly, I invited his mum to the assembly and he got a certificate and he was just so stoked with what he had achieved. The intrinsic benefits. His principal says that's all very well, but teachers need to be able to pay the bills. We have uh, two beginning teachers that have come to teach at Birdwood School this year. Both of them are starting on 46000 which is just under $900 a week before tax, or roughly $22 an hour. But Jenny Bernard is not only a teacher, she's a mum too, and last year she noticed her teenage daughter was being offered a higher hourly rate than she could offer her graduate teachers. Now, this is crazy. My daughter, who works for a coffee shop, while she was still at secondary school, who was 17 years old, she was offered a senior position on her shift at the coffee place. I won't say the coffee place. And she was going to earn $25 an hour. Now, she doesn't have a degree. She's still at school. Isn't that crazy? And we are talking about the future of our country, our teachers teaching them. It's criminal. They need to earn more money. And perhaps Jenny would say that. But if that sounds like advocacy for her staff during a pay round, enrolment numbers suggest something is required. The latest Ministry of Education figures show that between 2010 and 2016, the number of people enrolled in teacher training fell from over 14,000 to under 9,000 in six years.
why would you want to come into teaching if you're not earning? You know, uh, you know. We know that Auckland is expensive. How on forty six thousand can a teacher pay rent, pay power, pay water? They can't. Police officer. How did you know that that was police officer? Because it has the letters O and F. Off, off. Good boy, good using your sounds. James, the new entrance teacher, loves it. The intrinsic things, writ large, his is a sense of vocation. What was he shouting? Fire, fire, fire. Excellent, next page. But the kids bounce like pinballs. Concentration spans are measured in seconds. Oh, sorry. We're remembering our respect, one person speak at a time, sorry. And by the day's end. Oh, I'm knackered, yeah, I'm tired. Especially later in the term, as the term rolls on, you get more and more exhausted, I guess, but, you yeah, know, yep, very tired. Is it a rewarding job? Very rewarding, yes. Um, it's just awesome when I see the children grow with what they're learning and get to where they need to be, um, as well as myself. Uh, growing as a teacher as well. I'm learning heaps as, along with the children. Which is what a vocation feels like, but landlords don't accept that check and you can't save for a deposit on a home with it. And increasingly, the paradox of teaching is that a job that's so rewarding in vocational terms isn't financially rewarding enough to attract sufficient new applicants. What will it be? The money or the bag? Knowing that I came in here and you were going to be asking me these kind of questions and I, um, I feel like I'm just one teacher. That's Sharon again, who feeling the weight of responsibility speaking on behalf of her entire profession did this. What I actually did was I, I got in touch with every Facebook friend teacher that I had and I just said to them, if somebody asked you the question of how are things for you, what would you say? A survey of sorts from teachers for you, listeners and viewers of RNZ. Um, can I read them to yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. And off she went to get her phone, the modern world. And this is an edited sample of what the teachers who replied to Sharon want you to know. So this first response was, hi Sharon, this sounds great. I love my job, I love teaching, and I love seeing the way the light goes on for some kids and their love of learning. Unfortunately, what I am currently battling is large numbers in the classroom, with at least a third of my children with complex learning needs, from sight to autism. I can have up to three children have a meltdown at one time, including this week running out of the gate because I asked him to sit with the rest of the class. I am one adult in a space with 30 children trying to keep learning happening for all. That's just a random person that is a teacher that I know and that was her response. So, The next one, I often think about leaving the profession as it is hard supporting a wife and three children on a teacher's salary. That is one of the main reasons we left Auckland, moving away from family and friends. This took its toll on my health, marriage and personal relationships. To be honest, it is getting harder and harder. Hope this helps, I tried really to be honest. And so the survey teachers, James the new teacher, Sharon the senior teacher who's gone about as far as she can go, and Jenny the principal, let's end with her. Decades in the job and three points to make. One, pay teachers more or run short of teachers. Two, give special needs students the support they need. And three, value teacher aiding as real and meaningful work. Because when it comes down to it, while money, many teachers say they're not here for the money, they still have bills to pay. I would also like to see teachers better resourced in terms of special needs, you know, those kids that are coming into school with those complex needs, as well as maybe a better career pathway for them. I think our, we call our learning assistants, teacher aides, we call them poafina. Now, those guys, they come here and they do a really important job in our school. And some of those guys are only on $17 an hour. Now, would you do it?